I don't, I, I love it. I know it's not for everyone, but I love it. I think it's amazing. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. This is actually past Kirsten. The Kirsten's wrapping up the vlog, coming in to start it because this vlog has been butchered. I originally did this vlog as two different vlogs. We had the Agatha Christie solving the murder mystery. That video which came out before this one was a part of this weekly vlog but it was so long. In all honesty, I think that that Agatha Christie one needed its own video. So I decided to butcher it, but I also didn't want to refilm the parts that I'd already spoken starting this reading vlog and what I'm reading. So there will be a couple of things which don't quite make sense. At least you know why, but there we go. <laughs> so we're gonna hop back to past Kirsten, talking about the fact that we were reading Murder at the Vicarage during the day and during the evening. Well, I'll let her take it from here. Every detective does need a break. In the evenings, when I get back home from work, we're going to be reading The Ninth Rain. I started this last week. I'm enjoying it so much. This was the book that won for the choice of the month. If you don't know, I do a TBR game and every single month I have one choice of the prompts that you all choose. I give you an option of two different books and this month Ninth the Rain has one. I'm really excited to continue. I'm really enjoying this. I started at the end of last week's vlog and at the moment we're on page 116 chapter 9. Really really good. I have been making notes about this just to keep track of all the different characters and things that's going on. It is a very interesting fantasy world and the first few chapters of this has all been setting up the world and our characters. Characters. In this world we have these different, I'm calling them elf-like beings, they do have an actual name and stuff but I can't quite remember it and can't pronounce it so we're going to go with elves. <laughs> they are long-lived beings, they did have this tree god that would give them this sap of life that basically makes them long-lived, it makes them able to heal really fast and all these extra things. Unfortunately in the last war known as the Eighth Reign which took place I think about 300 years ago, their tree died and so they were all starting to die they were starting to wither away age and stuff as humans do and they were not happy with this so in the middle of the war they needed to find a way to stop that from happening because they had to defeat the evil that was happening so instead they turned to drinking human blood so they kind of became elf vampires the resulting effect of that though is that they now have this kind of like a disease called the crimson flux which has then decimated their ranks and it's really quite bad so we're following two different people from this race of beings one called Hest Hestilian also known as Hest she has decided to stay with her people. She is trying to look after them as much as she can. She's seeing everything just crumble away to dust around her. Her chapters are few and far between. And that I mean that we've had one um, and a prologue with her, but I feel like those are the chapters to pay the most attention to because I feel like that's gonna have the most foreshadowing of what's to come, especially because their cousin who Hest interacts with is trying to use tarot cards to see the future of what's going to happen and he makes a comment at the end of her chapter which I made a connection with. I definitely think there's more connections to be made but I was a bit tired then so I definitely think her chapters are going to be ones to pay attention to for the outcomes and for things that are going to happen in this book. Her brother Tor, also known as Tourmaline, he has chosen to leave the people. He's like I can't watch this, I cannot watch our people crumble away into nothing and so he is now known as an outcast he has been wandering. He's been just roaming around, going from tavern to tavern, trying to just live out his life while he can, while he has it. He ends up meeting up with our human perspective in this called Vintage, also known as Vin. She is a 40 year old woman, which I really like actually. It's nice having an older perspective for a change. And she was running this family estate vineyard, but she's decided, you know what, enough's enough. I'm tired of seeing what is known as the wild encroaching upon their vineyard and being able to do nothing about it. Now the wild is a leftover, kind of like, again, a disease almost from 
the previous war that happened as much as it was 300 years ago but no one really knows anything about it and Vintage decides I'm going to find out more and see if there is something we can do about this because it's just making the lands unlivable but she ends up meeting up with Tor and they are now together trying to battle things they come across things known as spirits which are again part of all of this leftover remnants from this war that is just decimating the world you with me so far <laughs> the fourth perspective is Noon. Noon is a witch. Witches in this world are really quite feared. They are placed in this prison. They are treated terribly and all because they control something called a winnow flame which means that they can take the life force or life essence of plants, animals, other humans and beings, transfer that life essence so essentially they can kill people and use the essence to create this flame. It is a really ridiculously hot Flame. They are also being used, so all of these witches get put in this prison, they are kept there, they're not allowed outside, they're not allowed to do things, they're treated horribly, and they're also being used, so apparently they get purged, but this purging is them using this flame to create this drug that the priests who are running this prison then sell, which, you know what, that's just wrong. And Noon manages to escape, that's not a spoiler, it is on the back. Which brings in our fifth perspective, Agent Lynn. Agent Lynn is a witch. She was a previous inmate but has shown that she has enough control over herself and that basically the priests have control over her to be allowed out and to become an agent for them and this basically means finding witches and bringing them back or in the case of Noon finding escaped witches. She is definitely a interesting character. She's seems very unstable which is understandable after everything that she's been through you know she's been tortured as a result she is quite a interesting character to follow but also her chapter was really quite dark i wasn't expecting a whole torture scene that she instigated so that is where we're at with all of our characters that was a really long explanation for everything but i do think it needs it going forward should be a lot easier now we've got that base premise but i am really enjoying this one it's really well written really engaging and i all of the characters have their own individual personality that shines through in this it's i don't know i'm just really enjoying it i think it's really good thank you so much for joining let me know how you've been what you're up to and Yesterday evening I read a little bit more of Ninth Rain. I'm now up to chapter 13, page 161, so I only read like 45 pages. And the plot's just developed to the point where Noon is now with Tor and Vintage. And so they are all together, they have just found remnants of a behemoth, that's quite interesting. I also like the fact that in this, at the start of every chapter, we get a snippet from either Vintage's journal or a letter to her brother. And I really like that because you're actually getting a lot more insight into the world. Really done very well. So yes, it feels a bit info dumpy, but also not because it's from a journal entry and Vintage is so hyper-focused on trying to solve what is going on. What are the parasites? what is the wild what is causing all this what is the impact of the behemoths like she's very much basically a scientist she's trying to analyze everything and i find that fascinating really really enjoying this we also had another chapter on hestilian which again i think those chapters are really important it was just a small thing but it was to do with her dream walking and the tree god and that it intrigues me i think there's going to be a lot more but that's it for that one i also started an ebook yesterday and I decided to go with Hunting Adeline. Hunting Adeline is the second book to Haunting Adeline which I read last week. I just decided to pick it up again. We know it's a nice easy read. At this point we have Zaid who is our stalker from the first book. He is fallen in love with Adeline and he finds out that someone has taken Adeline and so he is now on a rampage to get her back. He is someone that infiltrates 
trafficking and rips them all apart and does what he can to put an end to this. And then we have Adeline. Adeline has been kidnapped at this point and she wants nothing more than to get back to Zaid because she did end up falling in love with him. It's a dark romance book, we knew that was going to happen. But she is now being trafficked and it's a really horrendous situation. Please check all the trigger warnings. There is a lot, it's a very graphic book. For myself, I just find it a quick fast read. It's engaging enough with enough plot for me to be invested in it but primarily it is just a dark romance book and there are issues with the writing and stuff I spoke about that at the end of last week's vlog there is a lot of swearing and stuff in it but I go into this for something that I don't have to focus too much on and like I said it's nice to have a bit more of an interesting plot line to go with it so those are all the books that I'm reading I did get some books and I'm very pleased with these books because three of them are books that I've been after and just haven't been able to find in Waterstones and that so I went to an independent bookshop and was so excited but before we get into that I have one thrifted book and that is The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. This is not a book I've ever read, I know there's a film, I have not read read the film, not watched the film and yeah I don't know, I don't know what this is about but a lot of people say it's really good and I know it's told from Death's perspective and it's all about Nazi Germany. I think it's going to be an interesting time, it is a book that I've been meaning to read for a while and now I've got it. It will probably sit on my shelves for a good few months before I get around to it but it's there. A lot of people say it's one of their favourite books so I'm interested to try and see if I like it. And then the independent bookshop really pulled through. I literally just went in to pre-order some books for next year because again I was really struggling to find the editions that I wanted. They had it, they were like yeah of course we can order that which was amazing and then I thought while I'm here let me have a little look around and yeah they, they pulled through, they really pulled through. I got three books I'm very excited for. So starting off with The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. This is the fourth book in the Truly Devious series. Well I don't want to say that really because it, we're still following Stevie Bell from the first three books. It's not following the case of Truly Devious anymore so Stevie Bell instead has another case to crack. I'm really excited. It's a cosy YA murder mystery. Can't wait to carry on with this one. We also have Mary's Monster by Lita Judge and this is a book I was so excited to find. It is absolutely stunning underneath the dust jacket and every single page is filled with illustrations and this is all about Mary Shelley and how she created Frankenstein. It is more of a biography but it's done in like a poetry format. I'm I'm fascinated. I cannot wait to read this. I saw this because of Emmy. She was reading it. I fell in love with it so definitely had to get it and I was so surprised to see it in a bookshop. I'm loving it. And then the book that I really wanted to get last week but couldn't find anywhere which was frustrating because it is a new release and that is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. This is Holly Jackson's newest murder mystery. I am very excited. She is the one that did a Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, one of my favourite YA murder mysteries ever and this is her newest one. It is signed and also look at that. I am loving this. It is absolutely amazing. So yeah I'm really really pleased I found this especially because Waterstones and a few other bookshops that I went into like they just didn't have it and they were like we're meant to be getting it and then I walk into this independent and they have it so I was like definitely coming home with me. Right, I need to get on, get ready for work. And Good morning. Let's talk about the Ninth Realm because this is always the quickest update to do. Mainly because I've been so exhausted in the evenings, I haven't really been reading much. I did get up to chapter 17, page 205. I really wanted to finish it this week, but I don't think that's going to happen. We've still got like 300 ish pages to read, and I've been so exhausted. I've been exhausted for a little while, to be honest, but. Moving on. In this chunk that I read, I don't want to go too much into spoilers of things, but we are starting to have dreams that are prophesizing the new 
war that's going to happen. So it's always the same beings every single time that try and take over the planet. And it's always been the Aborians, so the elves, that have pushed them back. And now the dreams are basically saying, we're coming back. And uh, where is Aboria now? It's basically who's going to save you now? That is very, very interesting, very difficult, because it's true. All of the Aborians have faded into nothingness because of the Crimson Flux, because their tree that was always there to protect them and produce these amazing beasts that would go into war with them has died and that is yeah it's it's it's, it's scary because it, the villain basically the, what they're having to go up against is so dangerous and gruesome and I have no idea how they're gonna stop it it is it's horrifying to think about so yeah that has been an interesting development in this and also uh, I really want to talk about I think it's pronounced folklore it's a big bat, a massive white bat that the witches used to get around and Noon took Folkor, or well technically was given Folkor to escape. It's such a lovely bat, like I'm not gonna lie, she's so lovely and if anything happens to her I will be heartbroken. It is just, she's just lovely. She, you know, she goes around, she's trying to bring back food for everyone and trying to be there and help and stuff and she's just, she's so lovely and she doesn't want to go back to the winery either so I don't know, I just think, think it's really good. But yeah, that's the update. We have a big bat that I really like and we are having dreams which are foretelling some awful things are going to be coming. So yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really loving this. The writing style's really engaging. It's definitely the sort of fantasy book that really works for me. And uh, yeah, if it continues on this way, I cannot wait to pick up the next two and carry on this series. And I'm so happy as well, because just, it's nice to have a fantasy book that you're really excited about. And if it wasn't for Elliot Brooks talking about this, I wouldn't have picked it up. It's why I always spend so much time watching so many other booktubers, because you find so many books recommendations that way that you just wouldn't have found otherwise. Very grateful. So thank you so much for that recommendation. I am very much enjoying it and would highly recommend. I know I had a few people that were saying, oh, I really want to get into this and stuff and maybe you'll convince me. This is me telling you, get on it. It's good. It's great. I'm loving it. And then as we know, I have my ebook for the week and that is hunting Adeline. Now I didn't really go into details yesterday too much because I thought that this vlog was going to be mixed in with another vlog and it was taken forever so I rushed through that so I'm just going to quickly go into that a bit more. I'm currently up to part two, that's 46 of the way through and this one is the second book in the Haunting Adeline duology. The first book we're following Adeline who is a independent author, she publishes independently, she's just inherited this mansion from her nan and she was in the process of doing it all up when she gets a stalker. The second perspective is of our stalker Zaid and uh, he is completely obsessed with Adeline and obsessed with making her his. But what makes it more interesting and gives the plot to everything is the fact that Zaid is is constantly trying to take down trafficking rings, trying to save women and children from these awful things, making the people that are doing it pay. And so it made the plot really interesting, which makes a difference when you have a dark romance and you actually have a bit more of a plot line to it. This second book goes on from the ending of the first book, as you would expect. Um, now up to part two, Adeline's just managed to escape, Zage just found her, and so that is where we're up to. For today, I have work again we're on the last two days of my eight day stretch so I'm just so grateful that we're coming to the end although to be fair the weekend is going to be just as busy there is so much going on I'm with my partner on Saturday I'm with my dad and sister on Sunday so there's just there's a lot going on but yeah I'm gonna finish getting ready for work and I will be catching up with you tomorrow morning fingers crossed I've made more progress with Night Frame because I am really loving this book I'm really enjoying it and I would love to at least read 100 pages It'd be the most that I've read of this in one sitting not because I'm not enjoying it, but just because I'm so blooming tired. But I would love to get through 100 pages. That is the goal today. We'll see whether it actually happens. So keep your fingers crossed. We're going to see.
Good morning! I have decided to DNF the ebook Hunting Adeline. I made it to 54% so I haven't read that much more but yeah I just I'm not as invested. I think because we don't have the romance part to it this time so this book just feels very needlessly violent. I know it's carrying on with the plot line and everything to do with like the trafficking and stuff so obviously it's going to be a lot of brutal scenes there but I also think that was it really needed? I don't know. The the second half of this book has been focusing a lot on Adeline trying to recover from everything that's happened. We have lots of time jumps that are happening which I think is like I forgot to mention um, that I didn't quite get on with in the first book as well is that th there's no proper time like you just kind of have to ignore time for this book and that's really apparent in this second part where they're just skipping through weeks and months and it's not until someone says oh yes weeks I've been doing this that you realise how much time's passed. I'm just not as focused on it. I think it's really good that H.D. Colton has taken the time to actually look into recovery of this, how difficult it's going to be, the fact that she's going to have terrible dreams, the fact that she's going to keep reliving things, that she can't deal with physical contact and stuff like that. So I think it's done really well in actually handling that but I just know the rest of it's just going to be hunting down the society and putting an end to it and I just don't know if I can be bothered to read that with a lot of violence and stuff. I think the first book it was ridiculously violent and stuff and there was a lot of unnecessary things but the romance kind of held my interest to it enough that even though it was a ridiculous romance and completely unbelievable it was okay because I didn't mind it for that because I went into it for a dark romance book and easy read this one we're just not getting that don't get me wrong the romance is still there Zade still very much loves her and stuff but it's just not gripping me anymore and I was reading it yesterday and I was just like I'm not actually enjoying this I'm not actually wanting to know what happens and I was just reading it for the sake of reading rather than because I'm enjoying it so I've decided to put it down whether I go back to it or not I don't know but for now it's a DNF and to be quite honest normally when I get to this point of saying oh if I maybe go back it's normally just a straight DNF and I won't go back to it but I leave it open because you never know never say never but yeah I don't know it was just needlessly violent and graphic in this one and as much as we're past the trafficking bit and you'd think well you just got through the worst of it I know that there's more to come with hunting down these people and having torture scenes and stuff as retribution of what happened and I just it's not me I don't, I don't want to read that. On a more positive note, I did read my 100 pages of Ninth Rain and I'm so pleased I did. I am now up to chapter 27, page 302 and I am enjoying this so much. I'm definitely going to get this finished across the weekend. I've had, I don't want to go into massive spoilers and stuff, but there has been a couple of developments in this regarding the dreams that I said were prophesizing the end and the fact that these worm people were coming back and they're going to be annihilated because Ebora is no longer there. Um, we find something out about those dreams which I thought was so good like I'm so intrigued to see what's going to happen now. It's going to be great. I think it's going to be fantastic but those dreams have actually spurred some people who have been receptive to the dreams into going to Ebora and trying to save their tree god and that's been interesting for Hest and her cousin to actually deal with because they've had like no people for such a long time like decades and decades to then have all these people and they're all like yeah we're gonna help you because you need to save the world it's definitely changed that up for them so that's been an interesting dynamic and obviously learning about those dreams like the truth behind it I liked that. That was that was really good. And then we have Agent Lynn. She's still a character that I think is mean, unhinged, but there is something around her that makes it more understandable why she's the way she is, like even more so. I was so shocked, like I shouldn't be shocked because there were tidbits for it that were sprinkled through the book, but I just didn't expect it. And it was just like, wow. So yeah, again, I don't wanna go into spoilers and stuff, but that was really, really quite shocking. And I really feel for Agent Lynn. The winnery, honestly, they are the true evil people here. Like they are horrific. And the more you learn about them, the worse they are and I didn't think it could get much worse but holy hell it does. So yeah that's that's been interesting and then yeah we just have our trio that are traveling together to try and uncover more and more truths and evidence about the worm people and about what's causing the wild and all of this which is really interesting and it is quite scientific because vintage is fully 
there for the science she's very much trying to do all of this and then she just has Tor there as basically hired muscle um although he's a lot more entertaining than that like it's really good I love their dynamic and then Noon is there to help them as well now and it's just fascinating so you do get a lot from the world through the science through vintage but I do think it's done really well which I'm pretty sure I touched on yesterday but it is it's very very good I'm really enjoying this book so yeah I do plan on finishing this up over the weekend we have about 230 pages I think it's going to be doable although I am in for a busier weekend which again I think I already mentioned so I'm not going to go back into it anyway right I need to stop rambling as usual get ready for work but it is the last day so we're very happy with that with two days off now I'm I feel like picking up another ebook because I like having a book on me just to be able to read like on my phone to hand it's nice quick easy to take out definitely want to get the kindle for that because then i'm not on my phone all the time but i also don't know what i'm feeling i actually have quite a lot downloaded so i think when i do get the kindle we're going to have a whole separate video of all the books that i've downloaded through kindle unlimited things that are on my tbr and stuff and just have a whole video around that so but yeah anyway i am still procrastinating and i do need to get ready because i don't think i have long until i've got to get my train so let's go I haven't updated in a couple days. I had quite a busy weekend to be quite honest. As you know, I was meeting my partner and we went for honestly a beautiful meal. It was so nice. It's one of my favourite restaurants. It actually is my favourite restaurant in London. It's called Obino. It's a Japanese omelette restaurant and it's so fantastic. I love their food so much. So we went to that and then afterwards we stopped to toast some marshmallows. I say we. My partner did the toasting of the marshmallows and I just happily ate them. But it was really fun, really nice and it was just such a good way to spend like a cold wintry evening because it's definitely got a lot colder here it started snowing and everything which I was too tired to film any of the actual snowfall which is a shame because I think that would have looked lovely but never mind the reason why I was so tired is because the next day I'm up with my dad and my sister and we went to a satanic market which was so good I wish I'd actually filmed some footage I did film some and then some of the content that was in it I was just like would, would I get in trouble for that? I don't know, just because some of the artwork is quite explicit, so I was like, maybe not. But it was brilliant there. You had loads of stalls of different artists that were able to showcase their stuff. A lot of things that I'd never seen before. It was fantastic. It's things that were just a bit quirky or gothic or it was just, it was so good. I was so tempted to spend loads of money. I didn't. Do I regret it? Yes. I did get one thing, which I'm really pleased I did, and that is this beautiful buddy girl i absolutely love it it's stunning she's amazing it's an artist that takes toys that have been abandoned and then refashes them into something else a lot of this stuff was actually really quite grotesque and gory this i saw i just saw all i saw was this and i was like what is that? That looks really awesome. And then I pulled it out and I was like, oh my god, yes. And my sister was like, if you don't get that, I'm going to be so disappointed in you. That is such a you thing. And it is. I love it so much. I'd actually been contemplating buying a doll for a little while, just like maybe a Barbie doll or Bratz doll or something, just to relive those childhood days. And I saw this and I was like, no this is the one for me i absolutely love it it is a bit ridiculous and i don't I, I love it i know it's not for everyone but i love it i think it's amazing and then i was walking around the whole time with it like this because we got it quite early on and everyone's like oh my god where did you get your buddy doll and i'm just like it's so cute 
I love it. Even so, the actual market, they were doing their prices at quite a reduced price. My dad actually spoke about it and he said like, it's probably to get more people like giving out their cards and stuff, get them interested in that. But even this bunny doll, it was only 10 pounds. Like that was a really good reduction on the price. And I, I loved it. I was really hesitant at first. I thought oh, it was gonna be really expensive. And so I put it down originally. And then I went back and I was like, you know what, no, how much is it? And then they said, and I was like, oh my God, it's mine. <laughs> so yeah. A bit ridiculous but I love it it's so cute so now she sits on my desk ready for when I edit but reading wise that's why we're actually here I didn't start another ebook I am thinking about it but again I just don't want to be on my phone I've got this week off work so I worked yesterday morning which was interesting because of all the snow and stuff there were so many disruptions but it was an interesting time it was fun it made the day go really quickly um, and then the rest of this week I have off so I'm really happy I'm only work in one day well I did I worked the one day um so I didn't pick up an ebook and uh, I am thinking that I won't this week just so I'm not on my phone if it if I had the kindle I would pick up an ebook I think they're a really good way to break up my reading but for this week I just don't want to be on my phone loads like I will be because I watch YouTube and stuff but I just don't want to that's not making any sense moving on moving on point is I didn't pick up an ebook I want to but I don't want to use my phone for it so I think I'm gonna wait but I did finish ninth rain and this was so good I really really enjoyed it the ending was so interesting really quite for me explosive with stuff that was going on renovations that were made and just where it all is now and how are they gonna go forward and deal with all this stuff like I think it's so good it's such a interesting book and I cannot wait to get the second one in a series. I'm honestly surprised that there's not more hype around this book. I think it's really done very well and it's very accessible. It's very easy to read. I highly recommend. So everyone that was messaging me saying, oh, I might pick this up if you pick it up. Do yourself a favour, pick it up. If you're looking for an adult fantasy, give this one a try. I would highly recommend. It was so good. I really enjoyed the characters. I think it's really nice to have multiple different perspectives but feeling the differences between each character their different quirks the things that made them them and that I loved and it held up throughout this book there were bits of humor there was bits of sadness and it was just it worked I really really enjoyed this so I would highly highly recommend but that is the end so thank you so much for watching if you made it this far then let's put a little bird emoji and yeah thank you thank you so much if you have enjoyed this video, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one.